multiply. We can multiply polynomials. Yeah, I mean, if I have a couple of polynomials, you know, one plus x squared, say, uh, maybe multiply that times uh, three minus x. Well, I can multiply polynomials and get a new polynomial, right? One times three minus x uh, plus three uh, x squared minus x cubed is what I get when I multiply these two polynomials. We can also multiply power series. Let's well, suppose. I want to multiply the sum n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n times x to the n by another power series. Maybe the sum n goes from zero to infinity of b sub n x to the n. Well, how do I even get started? Well, one way to at least get started on this is to just expand these out. Right? So I can write out the first few terms here. That's a sub zero plus a sub one x plus a sub two x squared, and it would keep on going. And then I want to multiply that by, I'll write down the first few terms of this blue uh, power series with the b sub n's. So b sub zero plus b sub one x plus b sub two x squared, and it would keep on going. And what do I get when I multiply these? Well, I can try to think about uh, how these terms might combine and give me various powers of x. So I have to pick something here and multiply it by something here. So the only way that I get a constant term, a term without an x, is when I multiply a sub zero by, uh, by b sub zero. So I can start by writing that down, a sub zero times b sub zero. But then what's the next coefficient in the product? Well, I have to think about how can I get just a linear term, a term with just an x in it. And there's two different ways I could do that. I could multiply a sub zero by b sub one x, or I could multiply a sub one x by b sub zero. So I should write down both of those terms. So a sub zero times b sub one plus a sub one times b sub zero and those are the only ways that I can get a term with just a single x. What about the x squared term, right? Well, there's actually three different ways that I get an x squared term. a sub zero times b sub two x squared would give me an x squared. a sub one x times b sub one x would give me an x squared. And a sub two x squared times b sub zero would also give me an x squared. So let me write down all three of those. So I've got a sub zero times b sub two plus a sub one times b sub one plus a sub two times b sub zero. And those are all the different ways that I might get an x squared when I multiply together these two power series. And then it would keep on going. The trouble is that the coefficients get kind of complicated. Of course, not all hope is lost. There is a pattern here. Well, that's the pattern. Well, here I've got the constant term, the x to the zero term, if you like, and these are both zero. Here I've got the x to the first term, and these indices add up to one, zero plus one and one plus zero. Here I've got the x squared term, and these indices also all add up to two. Zero plus two is two, one plus one is two, two plus zero is two. And you might guess then, well, what's the coefficient on x cubed? it's going to be combinations of the a sub n's and the b sub n's where the indices add up to three. Well, let's write down at, at least what our guess is then for the uh, formula in general. So this will be the sum n goes from zero to infinity of another series, the sum i goes from zero to n of a sub i times b sub n minus i, and it's this coefficient in front of x to the n. I need to say a little bit more about what this even means. So I'm imagining that I've got two functions. Maybe I got a function little f, which is given as the sum n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n x to the n. And I've got a function little g, which is the sum n goes from zero to infinity of b sub n x to the n. Now these power series might have different uh, radius of convergence. So let's just have big R be the minimum of their 
radii of convergence. It isn't just that the series with the convolved coefficients converges. I mean, I've got this product series, but I'm not just saying that this series converges when the absolute value of x is less than r. Right? I'm actually saying that this series converges to the value of f of x times g of x. Right? I'm making a claim that f of x times g of x is equal to the value of this series. Let me put it all together. Well, here's a precise theorem. So I got two functions, a function f and a function g. f of x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n, and g of x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of b sub n x to the n. Now f and g have these power series, and the power series have some radius of convergence. And I want to assume that both of those uh, radii of convergence is greater than or equal to big R. Well, then I've got a new power series here. The radius of convergence of this power series is at least big R. And here's what I know. f of x times g of x is equal to the sum n goes from 0 to infinity. And it's this weird convolved coefficient, the sum little i from 0 to little n of a sub i b sub n minus i times x to the n. And this equality at least holds when x is between minus r and r. And I mean, it's sort of reasonable looking. I mean, look at what's going on here. These coefficients have indices that add up to n. So certainly, when I think about multiplying uh, a piece of this power series and a piece of this power series, these are the terms that I'd expect to get in front of x to the n. I should warn you that we're not going to prove this result, but I hope it's plausible. And I hope you'll play around with it and try to get a sense of some of the consequences of this theorem. I mean, here's one example, kind of a cool thing that you can do with it. For example, uh, we've thought a little bit about e to the x, and e to the x has this really nice power series representation. It's the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And I could write out the first few terms, right? Plug in n equals 0, I've got 1. Plug in n equals 1, I've just got x. Plug in n equals 2, I've got x squared over 2 factorial, which is x squared over 2. Plug in n equals 3, I've got x to the third over 3 factorial, which is 6, and I plus dot, dot, dot. Now I can think about what happens when I multiply this power series by itself, right? What's e to the x squared? Of course, I secretly know what the answer is, right? Just because of how exponents work, e to the x squared is e to the 2x. So this should be 1 plus, I'm going to replace all these x's by 2x, 2x plus 2x quantity squared over 2 is 2x squared. Quantity 2x cubed divided by 6 is 8x cubed over 6, and then plus dot dot. But I can also think about this by multiplying the original power series by itself. Right? What do I get? So 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus dot 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 squared. Right? Well, I can think about the constant term. I get the constant term by multiplying 1 times 1. How do I get the next term, the term in front of the x? Well, that's 1 times x or x times 1. So that's 2x. How do I get the term in front of x squared? Well, there's three different ways to get that. 1 times x squared over a half, so a half. x times x, so 1. Or x squared over 2 times 1, so I'll put a half here. And sure enough, a half plus 1 plus a half is 2. What's the next term, right? I'm looking for the coefficient in front of x cubed. Well, there's four different ways to get x cubed. One times x cubed over six, so a sixth. x times x squared over two, so that's a half. x squared over two times x, that's a half. And then x cubed over six times one, that's a sixth. And then sure enough, a sixth plus a half plus a half plus a sixth, that's eight sixths. And then I could keep on going.